Let's work with arrays in C-sharp again. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new project. And this time, it's still going to be the console app. Go ahead and call it whatever you want. But this time, I'm going to go ahead and ask the user how many items or mailboxes or elements they want to make for this array. And we're going to go ahead and um, prompt for a number of string values. And then we're going to size that array and then get the data and print it all out. So I know I need an array. So I'm going to go ahead and say string, square bracket, square bracket. And I don't know the size yet, and so I'm just going to give it a name, AS Teams. I'll call it Teams. And then I'll go ahead and end it. Now, if you notice, something different about this is I'm not actually sizing that array yet. All I'm doing is telling Visual Studio C Sharp that someday I'm going to make an array of string. I'm going to ask uh, the user for that size. So I'm going to create a variable, int I size. And then let's go ahead and prompt the user by saying, how many teams? And then we want to go get that value from the keyboard. I size is equal to console.readline. And since readline returns a string, we have to convert it to an int. So I'll get the data from the keyboard as a string, convert it from an int, and store it to size. Now that I know the size of that array, I can actually create the array. So you use the variable name, AS Teams, equals new, specify the size of the, or the type of the array, which is string, square bracket, and now specify the size. I got the size from the user, from the keyboard, and so I can just use that variable value to specify the size. Now let's go ahead and create a for loop int i count equals zero as long as i count is less than the size of the array which we call length then we're going to go ahead and drop into this loop and i can say uh, to the screen what is the team name and then i can get the data and store it to the the array as teams bracket I count equals console dot read line and then that will load up the array. I could then print off all the elements of the array. I could use a for each or a for for each and then you specify what's the value inside of the array. The value in our array is a string, so I'll call it string, and then I give it a variable name, I'll call it S team name. You could call that anything you want. You specify where the data is. It's in the array called AS Teams. And then what do you want to do with each element of that array? Because for each will go to the first element, which is zero, grab the value, and put it inside of that variable. So we could print it off. And then it goes up and gets the next value, puts it in there, prints it off, the next value, and so forth, until there are no more elements. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. We're going to keep it short, so we'll say there's only three teams. What is the team name? BYU, Gonzaga, and let's go ahead and do Utah. Now, I didn't pause the screen. It did load it up, but let's go ahead and come back here. We'll say console.readline so that we can pause the screen and take a look at what it prints out. So we'll just do a console.readline, and we'll run it one more time to make sure the data pauses. And we'll use the same value. There's three, BYU or BYY, Gonzaga, Utah, and it prints off by Gonzaga, Utah. So that's a way you can actually prompt the user for how many elements you want to make in the array. Once you get the number of elements, you size the array. You can load it up and print it out. Now, let's say I wanted to print off the position of each team. Well, I could say, what is team, and we could put the counter in there. We'll do apostrophe S. Let's run that one more time and just watch what happens. 
So I'm going to print out what is the team and a number, apostrophe S, name. Let's go ahead and do three again. What is Team Zero's name? BYU. Team One's name? Utah and Gonzaga. Now, that doesn't really look really good because what user wants to see position zero? They don't understand that. But we have to have zero because that's what arrays are. They're zero based. The first element is zero. So if the size was three, I'm going to have a position 0, 1, and 2. Well, what I could do here is I know I count is going to be 0 the first time. So let's just say plus 1. Now, this doesn't assign anything back to I count. So this will just grab the value I count, which is 0 the first time. Add 1 to it. Print off 1. Next time it goes to 1. Add 1 to it. 2. Next time it goes to 2. Add 1 to it. 3. Let's run it one more time and see if it makes a little more sense to the end user. What is Team 1's name? BYU. And even though we're saying Team 1, it's really the first position of the array, which is 0. Team 2, Utah. Team 3, Gonzaga. And that's how you can actually prompt the user for the size of an array and also how you could print off a position of it and not do 0 based.